Hello and welcome to the DSP Project. I'm your host, Rupert Brown. And uh, this week I want to talk to you guys about um, something that came as a, in as a question from last week where I was covering the basics of the APC20. And uh, Daniel, with his keen eye, noticed that when I moved one of the faders um, that looked a bit kind of buggy or laggy or it didn't move straight away. Um, and this is no fault of the Akai hardware. It was something called MIDI Takeover. Um, which is a fairly clever solution that, that Live has for um, the problem of what to do when you are using uh, absolute controls to control multiple software parameters. And um, so basically when I talk about absolute controls, um, I'm talking about like on a, on a controller like this, you've got faders where you've got a, a hard 100% mark uh, or 0% or mark and the same with the the knobs here so if I turn that there's a physical stop that this this knob hits when I turn it so if that's at 100% and I turn some value up to 100% and then I, I might use my scene button here to start controlling uh, another parameter um, if the the new parameter that I'm controlling is set to 0% and then I start moving this down from its hardware 100% it's going to send like a 99% message let's say and then that parameter is going to jump from 0 to 99% and cause a, uh, a probably a very unwanted abrupt jump in the um, in the value. So Live has um, uh, come up with a way to deal with that and uh, this is what it is. Okay so here we have a set with a drum loop loaded in and I've also got an auto filter loaded in and I've assigned the frequency to the fader here. So just to quickly reiterate um, the, the problem that we're talking about here, uh, if I quickly jump to my MIDI configuration um, pushing command comma uh, and then under takeover mode here I'm going to set the the mode to none so there's no now there's no uh, lives not applying any special parameters so uh, let's say we have a control um, so I'll, I'll move this up high and I'm now going to just using the mouse I'm going to change the the value of this parameter so I'm going to bring this um, a a low pass filter right down here um, so basically there'll be no not much sound passing, maybe a little bit of bass. Uh, you, you'd be lucky if you can hear that. Um, so now let's say that this this is where it is, and we wanted that that was playing away, and we want to change our assignments for whatever reason, and change this fader to now control the um, the cutoff, and we want to come up, have a nice slow raise from down below, and bring it up. But because the, the fader is physically in this, this high position here and at a high frequency, as soon as I move this fader, it's going to send a message saying uh, we want to be up here somewhere near the 100% mark. And so you'll get a, a, an unwanted jump. So you can see I just, just touched that there and then we get that, that horrible jump from zero um, right up to sort of 100%. So how does live deal with this? If I come back to our configuration again, pushing command plus common. Um, the first um, takeover, well the second takeover mode I'll show you is uh, pickup. Now basically if we if we reset that scenario again so we've got the, the fader up high and then I'm going to use the mouse and bring the software um, value right down and uh, I'll, I'll play the loop. This time if I move the fader it doesn't jump um, and you'll see there's a big bright yellow bar down the bottom there which basically says the frequency is awaiting pickup um, at 62 hertz which is very low right down the bottom and it kind of says that at the moment you're uh, higher than that you're up in the in the kilohertz so with the um, uh, in this mode here basically it won't the fader won't have any control over the parameter until the fader physically comes becomes at the uh, same position as where the value is and then it picks up and then you'll get a one-to-one a -one motion again so I need to bring the fader right down to the bottom and then it picks up Uh, and this called drum loop by the way is from uh, a loop masters library um, the uh, KJ Sorka, I'm probably going to pronounce that wrong, uh, but it's a really awesome library and I'm hoping um, we're going to be talking a bit more about that in the future. But anyway, I digress. The, uh, the last mode I'm going to show you is, um, again, come to the options, command, comma, 
is value scaling. Now this is really quite interesting. Um, so let's say uh, we go for a similar scenario as before. I'm going to put the fader in the middle here, bring the software right down, and uh, play our loop. So we've got our, our drum loop going. Now, so in the if there's no if there's no um, takeover mode applied at all, and I, I move this as we know we get the jump, and with the take with the takeover mode we had before, then moving this fader up isn't going to do anything because it needs to reach the same value before it will take over. But we're in value scaling mode, if I start pushing this fader up, Live's going to realize that I'm I'm trying to turn this filter up, and it will actually scale. Um, the the whole travel of the software parameter over this the small amount of travel in the the hardware the absolute parameter. So if you watch what happens as I start um, pushing this fader up, and then then you get once it reaches the the same value, then you get one to one motion again. So hopefully that explains the takeover mode thing. Uh, one more final note on the MIDI jumping parameter problem is if you can um, get endless encoders, uh, endless encoders over ordinary knobs or potentiometers. So on the uh, the cork here, if I turn it, the knob up, there's like a hard stop, that hard limit. Whereas on an endless encoder, like on the Akai APC20 here, it's only got one. But just to demonstrate. The, uh, the knob sort of it turns forever, there's no hard stop. So when I assign this to a new parameter and start moving it, it basically just starts adding or subtracting to whatever the value is that it's controlling. So as far as the, the jump on knobs is concerned, endless encoders are the way to go. Uh, faders are a lot more difficult because of their physical nature. Um, you can get motorized faders, which gets you around it, but uh, to be honest, motorized faders are fairly rare, and if you want semi decent ones, they are expensive as well. That is about all we've got time for this week. Uh, I just want to say thank you to those who have put their hands up uh, already to help out with the show. So I'm just talking to a few people now. Hopefully they'll come on board and help push things forward. Um, as far as uh, expansion goes, we have um, something exciting coming up. We should hopefully have our first giveaway very soon. Um, but I will tell you more about that next week. Uh, and I think next week we'll probably get back onto the APC20 track, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, that's all for this week, and I'll see you next week. Wrong hand.